Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode with the ZX9R. Now, as you can see, we haven't got much further to go before it is literally in kit form. Um, so, what I'm going to do is crack on with uh, the remainder of the teardown. Um, we're at kind of at a point now where we have to do this in a semi-logical order, otherwise it will just make our lives difficult because once we take the wheels off, it's sitting on the floor. Um, the rear wheel can obviously come off because it's, um, it's on the paddock stand, but the swing arm does need to come out. Once the swing arm's coming out, then the frame is basically on the deck. Um, so I think what we'll do first is I will take off things like the brakes, the rear sets, stuff like that. Then we'll take the rear wheel off. Um, and then I will probably start looking at the swinging arm because then I can rest the back of the frame on the deck while we start dropping the forks out. So I think that's where we'll go. So thanks for stopping by. Let's dig into it. Okay, I think where I'm going to begin is I'm going to remove the back brake, the uh, rear brake master cylinder and all that good stuff, then get the, uh, the rear set off. So I'll begin by pulling the bolts out that hold the heel plates on, because they also hold on the master cylinder. So I'll put these in my little plastic Chinese tub to keep them safe. Along with these, these will clean up quite nicely, a little bit of polish, and uh, they'll be as good as new. I mean, they, they don't look terrible now, to be, uh, to be honest. Okay, at the back here, we've got a split pin. That's a ricotta pin, if you're from America. Pretty mullet in there as well. We've got another couple of six mil Allen headed screws. <laughs> Obviously, the, the, this bracket here that the caliper mounts onto will come off with the wheel when, they, when we pull the axle out. On the on the disc, there we go. Push push the pads back in a little bit, and it came off quite easy. So we've got that as one assembly that can go to one side as it is, and uh, yeah, we'll work on that um, later on down the line as part of the project. Um, okay, what I'll do this side while I'm here is pull off this rear set. Um, I've seen quite a lot of these actually cracking uh, these these brackets here. Um, I think age maybe or someone, oh, I don't know to be honest whether it's because it's been dropped on that side and it's broken it, but um, yeah, I've seen quite a few. Uh, that is absolutely ludicrous, what is that? I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, weird. Anyway, 
uh, yeah, that can obviously go in a box as well. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's another stage for further forward to uh, the tear down. So, I think what I'll do next, go over the other side, take the other footrest hanger off, and then we'll look at the brakes on the front. Right, what we'll do is um, get this get this rear set off on this side as one whole assembly. And once this is off, we'll look at the side stand. Um, side stand's only held in with two 14, 14 mil headed bolts. That was one of those kind of bolts that wouldn't come out by finger, it had to be come, it had to come out with a ratchet all the way. Um, they're in decent condition though, they'll come up nice with a bit of plate. Uh, and yeah, that's uh, that looks quite nice. So I'll stick that in my box down there, put those to one side. And then we can look at this uh, this side stand. Now, 14 mil bolts, um, two, one there and then one just there. Unfortunately, because the switch is in the way, you can get a socket onto that one, so I have to do that one with a spanner. But you can get into the one on this side. I mean, you can just strip the switch off if you want. But I'm just going to leave it as one whole assembly and hopefully I'll be able to get it off with a spanner. This side. There we are. As you can see, it's coming off. It's one of those ones where it will come off half a span of flat at a time, so I'll bring it back in a second. And there we are, as you can see, loads of Loctite used on these. As, as you would expect, the uh, for some reason side stand bolts. I've had um, I've had a couple of experiences where one of them's just like fell out uh, at some point, and um, you don't really realise until you realise that your bike seems to be leaning oddly, and that's because the whole side stand shifted on the frame. Anyway, I digress slightly. So that's the uh, that's the side stand off. We'll pop that into my box, and then what we'll do next is I think yeah, you will get we'll get the front brakes off. Get those. Get the front brake system off and get that off as one whole assembly. Again, just move the calipers off, hoses, and the lever, uh, along with the uh, reservoir, etc. And uh, yeah, pop that in the box and then uh, move on. Okay, what we'll do, I'll take the entire brake system off in one go. So if we uh, take off the caliper on this side first, these, I believe, are the stock bolts. Um, and they've got like a weird chromed finish to them uh, and they don't look particularly good at the moment um, and yeah they just look a bit bleh. so I may I may just replace them they are available still one we'll do go around the other side uh, in a second and take the other one off but first what I'll do um, there's a there's basically a splitter here um, and what that does is one one hose comes down from the master cylinder to this and then it splits into the splits into two hoses like this now um, you know it works perfectly perfectly adequately but um, what I may do uh, when I come to rebuild this is just fit hell lines or hell or good ridge something like that um, and run two separate lines from the uh, from the master cylinder. Just two lines from here straight down. I may not do that. I'm not 100% yet. Um, I may buy the standard replacement kit. I, I don't actually know. Um, I'll probably uh, decide later. Um, it's not it's not urgent. Certainly not at the minute. Um, so if I pull these, Ooh, that one wasn't even tight. That one was literally finger tight to be perfectly honest that one 
And there's one. Uh, as was that one. That one was finger tight as well. So uh, yeah, cheers to the original owner, uh, the last owner, should I say, for uh, undoing a few bolts for me, making my life easy. So there we go. Right, they can go in there. Box like so. Right, one thing I do want to point out here on this bottom yoke, you can see here. Uh, the casting is broken. That should have been steering stop, just like this one. Now that one's snapped off. Now in the UK, um, I'm sure this doesn't apply to every country in the world, but certainly in the UK, that is an MOT failure. So that will have to be fixed. I'm not gonna go for the effort of repairing it because it's just not, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Uh, it, it's just as easy to replace the whole thing and they are available. So I'll just get a new one and replace it. Okay, uh, let's get onto the caliper on the other side. Now this side, the bolts for the caliper are completely different. These are neither of these are stock. Uh, that one's Allen headed for a start, and that one's a what size is that? 15, 14, 14 mil bolt. Um, they're completely different to the ones on the other side, which are the standard. Um, so yeah, again, another another round of evidence of complete bodgery. Um, Out of there. The one for the other side is completely missing. Um, right, so now the only thing stopping this coming off is the, uh, the bracketry for the master cylinder itself. And what I'll do is I will undo the uh, the two bolts that hold the lever to the clip on and then take the bolt out for the uh, for the reservoir now the reservoir bolt is just a little just a little eight mil bolt down here hold it onto the top yoke the uh, reservoir removed. There's a bit of fluid in there so I'll ditch that shortly. Okay so now all that's remaining is the two bolts holding the lever to the bar. because it'll all want to fall off. rest of it. Let's get this cabling out of the way, feed that through underneath, underneath there, and there we are. There's the whole lot removed from the bike. So that can go into the box, bolts in the little tub. Right, so that's, now the brakes are off, I think the next step, what I'll do, I will move on to the rear, get the rear wheel off, leave the swing arm for the moment. But uh, while it's in this configuration, I think what I'll do is some things like the top nut for the, uh, for the fork yokes and stuff like that um, can all be loosened off so that they're easier to get out later. Um, uh, and then obviously we've got things like the bolts for the, the shock absorber, the shock linkage and all that good stuff. So yeah, let's crack on. Right, the, uh, the rear wheel nut is obviously loose already because um, we loosened it when we took the chain off the sprocket 
uh, of the front sprocket so we'll recover the nut and its washer. Now what I'll do, give it a little whack with my mallet and then withdraw it from the bike now. Again, take the chain off. There's a bracket for the uh, for the brake wiper that we mentioned earlier, and there is the rear wheel out. Uh, obviously, that sprocket's going to be junk. Um, things like the adjusters will all come out, and likewise. With the adjuster bolts, they'll all come out, but I'll get them out shortly. Um, I think what I'll do is stick all of this together like that and put the knot on the end, and then it's all together. And I can, oh, hang on, forgot about the washer, get that washer on there as well. Yeah, that can all go in the boxes as one unit, and obviously, that'll need a good clean up. Um, but it's in decent, con decent enough condition. It looks like someone's painted it with some gold paint or something at some point for reasons. Um, but yeah, so that's the wheel out. What I'm going to do now, I think, next is loosen all the bolts on the shock linkage um, and then we can look at taking it out. Um, I think the next stage is going to be shock out, swing arm out, uh, but there's a few things we need to do with the shock uh, sorry, with the uh, with the swing arm um, bolt, the swing yeah, the swing arm pivot, swing arm pivot. We need to loosen off because there is a lock nut on this side and a nut on that side. So we'll um, get all that sorted out, get the shock linkage loosened off next. Right. So shock absorber. Obviously, the shock absorber looks pretty uh, pretty shabby. The spring is absolutely shocking. Um, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Uh, probably won't go OE on this because they're ridiculously expensive for no real gain. Um, if I was going to do that, you'd probably be better off just getting this one rebuilt. Uh, but there are a lot of options from places like Nitron and stuff like that that do um, upgraded ones. And you can get them tuned to your weight as well, which is a bit of a bonus. Anyway, I'm digressing. What we're going to do is we are going to strip um, this out. But what I want to do first is I just want to crack all the, the, the bolts off first and I'm not going to take them all out yet, I'm just going to loosen everything so that it will come out when I come to do it and so each bolt um, I'm going to loosen, I think those ones are actually a different size than that on those, let's have a look. Not on that one. And yeah, I need a larger spanner. There's no weight in the frame, so uh, yeah, there we go. They were pretty tight, and again, I expect this one will be the same. Yeah, 
Now, nah, very good. Gonna need a breaker bar on that sucker. That one is very tight. So I'll go and get a socket and a breaker bar. And we'll get that one shifted. And there we go, that is the whole shock linkage loose. So what I'll do now, we'll move on to the swing arm pivot. We'll get all of that cracked off. Now there's a nut on this side uh, and on this side down here, obviously where the, the pivot itself is, we've got this lock nut. Now there's a special tool I've got to get that lock nut off. Once the lock nut's off and the nut's off that side, this can be withdrawn. But again, the, that itself is also threaded, so it needs to be wound out. So I'll go and grab all the tools I need and we'll get that up. Um, we'll get it undone, we won't take it out yet. Here is the tool to remove the lock nut. It's just a, basically a peg spanner. Um, they're available on eBay. I'll stick a link below if anybody wants to find one. Obviously you can make your own by chopping up a socket um, with a grinder, but that's quite destructive and I don't have spare sockets. So if I get that in like so and lean on it, there we are. Wasn't too tight. And there's the lock nut. Completely off. Like so. So that can go into the box with all the other stuff. There is a washer on here as well. Um, I can't get it off at the moment. I'll, go, I'll recover the washer in a minute, but what we'll need to do now is undo the nut on that side and then this can be wound out. But I'm not gonna pull it all the way out till such time as we've um, had a mess around with the forks and the yolks and stuff, got them undone. Then we'll um, probably look at the shock, uh, get, getting it off this um, paddock stand uh, and getting the forks out. Um, we're at kind of at a weird stage now where we've got to do things in a certain order, otherwise we're just gonna make our lives difficult for ourselves. So yeah, I'll get that nut off next and then um, we'll, we'll crack this off and make sure it's going to turn. Okay, this nut is 24 mil. Obviously the, the bike wants to tip over. And there we go. So there's the nut off. And obviously what we need to do now is wind this out uh, from the other side, um, but not yet. So, um, I think the next thing we'll do is get this off and probably look at getting the forks out maybe. I'm not sure which way around I'm going to do it. I certainly need to loosen it anyway. Probably then the shock and the spring arm I reckon because this bo the bottom of this frame can sit on the deck um, with no real detriment to getting the rest of it off. So I think that's probably the way we'll go. Loosen that off and then get this off. Right, so what I want to do up here is I need to uh, get this top nut off. Now, as you can see, this is really, really marred up from some ham-fisted idiot that's had a go at it before. Um, so I'm not sure how well this is gonna come out. I've got a feeling I may have to hammer a Torx bit into that to get it out. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do as well is I'm gonna crack the top nuts on, the, uh, on both the forks because it will make it easier later on when it comes to rebuilding them. Getting these out when they're off the bike can be a bit difficult. So we'll do that. First off though, we'll have a go at this nut. So I think what I'll do, if I sit astride the bike like so, get it onto the steering lock and I've got a breaker. Now these are very tight and obviously with it not being in the best of condition, it's not gonna, ah, there we go. That actually came out a lot easier than I expected it to. Um, so we can take that all the way out now. I've got a feeling the, uh, the tool would have probably have twisted in it. Um, yeah, the, uh, I'm going to have to knock that out, you can see it's, you can see there it's not uh, not doing too well, it's because it's all marred up. Um, I will replace that, they're quite expensive as it goes, um, but I'll see what I can find. Um, 
you know, um, on uh, online. Right, next, I'll um, get the relevant socket and we'll just undo, just, just take, I don't need to undo them because obviously there's oil in there and there's a seal behind it, but all I want to do is just loosen them so that they'll come out easier later. So I'll go and grab the socket I need and then we'll, uh, we'll get them off. What I've got here, 27mm six-sided. Six-sided is the best thing you can use on these because 12 point will just mar them up and so often you see these all absolutely knackered because somebody's absolutely chewed them. Um, so go six-sided uh, six on them where you can. And again, with my breaker, all I'm doing, I'm not taking them out, I'm just loosening them. One revolution should do it. Same here. That all that'll just help me out later on. Oil's not going to leak out there because the seal's still, um, the, uh, you know, doing its job. Um, but when it comes to stripping them down later, I won't struggle to get the top nuts off. So what I can do here now is the top yoke can come off, the clip-ons can come off. We'll leave the bottom yoke in place for the moment till such time as we've got all of this off. So um, yeah, I'll go and grab some more tools. We'll get the clip-ons off and we'll get the top yoke out. Right, for these clip-ons then, I'll take the, these screws out first. one obviously the switch gear I left attached and same with the clutch on this one it's all still intact yeah clutch um, and uh, switch gear and obviously the choke lever uh, all still all still in place we'll put those later on right now all we're left with is the top yoke so again there's a pinch bolt on either side I'm pretty sure that's all that's holding it in place but we'll find out in a second in fact what size is this I can get a socket in there now pretty sure it's that one yes so switch is there's like a little ridge and as you can see it's got to go over to the left in order to be able to lift it up because otherwise it engages on the bottom of this this look which is interesting not really sure why that's like that um, yeah so that was engaging on the bottom of that so there we are so there's the washer that goes under the top nut and here we have the ignition switch um, I'm fairly sure that those are the uh, the kind of bolts that shear off once they're fitted in it's like a bolt with a wasted portion as they're torqued up to the relevant spec um, they shear off and leave you nothing to be able to undo it with so they'll get drilled out and we'll just use um, we'll just use some nice new uh, bolts in there this top yoke actually looks to be in good condition there's like some sticky residue 
on top of it, um, which I'm assuming is from some sort of um, one of those like sticky, probably fake carbon knowing this bike, one of those like top yoke protectors that you can get, which has been removed, but whoever removed it didn't remove the glue. Um, but other than that, this looks to be in decent condition. So that can go in the box. Um, the ignition switch itself, obviously all the writing and the paint has come off. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that yet. I would like it to be um, factory fresh, but I may not be able to achieve that. We'll have to look into that. So now um, the, uh, the swing arm and the shock can come out. Um, and then later, uh, once, once we've done that, we can get the, uh, the locking ring off and the bottom yoke can be pulled out. Now, um, I don't want to do that until I've got all of that off. Um, and then the back of the frame can sit on the deck. Right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the bolts on the linkage. Now, as soon as the bolts come out on the linkage, the whole back end will basically collapse. Um, I'm not too concerned about it because that's just the way it is. Um, but what I'll do is remove one there, one there, and one there, and then the whole thing can come out and this linkage can stay on the bottom of the shock. Um, I don't need it to... Uh, I, don't, I don't need it to be um, pulled apart at this stage. Now, the... This one here is the one that's going to basically cause the, the whole thing to collapse as soon as it's off. So I'll get the nut out first. What I need to do is I need to I can take this away because it's no longer required. I'm going to take the weight of the the back end of the bike and basically remove that bolt. And as you can see, one of the dog legs dropped down. It's all sticky and gammy, covered in grease. And there you go. As you can see now, um, she wants to she wants to fall over. Um, I can balance it just. There we are. Right. That's the first of the nuts and bolts out. Next one I'll do is the one at the front. Front mount here. Um, if I take this one here off, then the whole of the linkage will be removed from the swing arm. Obviously, I'm just going to support it. I need a ratchet for the other side. So now, the bottom of the shock absorber is completely separated from the swing arm and the frame. What I need to do now is the top one. Kind of um, refreshing to see some some grease on something on this bike to be honest um, considering the life it appears to have had um, 
surprised it's, I'm surprised there's any grease anywhere near this leak. So now, if I lift the back end of the, the bike up, I can push that bolt out. And there we are. There is the shock absorber out. Now, obviously I've got to try and manoeuvre it out. Out of its position. And now I can sit the back end of the frame down. And there is the shock absorber and its linkage. Obviously the linkage will be rebuilt, there'll be needle bearings in there and all that good stuff. And like I said earlier on the shock absorber, I'm not 100% sure which, which route I'm going to go with it, but I'll figure something out later. Right, now we are in a position to get this swing arm out. So I'll grab the tools I need and we'll get the pivot bolt out of the swing arm. Okay, swing arm pivot bolt, massive Allen key. Uh, I can't even remember what size it is, but it's absolutely huge. And what we're going to do is just back it out. And now that it's undone, it's coming out fairly easily. Uh, as you can see, I can do it by hand. Um, Right, now what I'll do, I'll take the weight of the frame and pull her out, and there we are. And there is the swing arm removed from the frame. Obviously the chain can now be looped off and that can actually go in the bin because it's, it's scrap. Um, now, the, that does, uh, that does rest there quite nicely. Um, the swing arm has a lot, of, uh, a lot of bearings and things in it and the, um, I mean it feels quite nice actually, I can, I can turn the bearing and it's, it feels quite smooth uh, but obviously we'll, we'll be checking them out. Um, the linkage here, obviously there's bearings in there as well. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously it just needs a really really good clean and the paint and it probably look as good as new. That in the bin, and yeah, there we go. Obviously, as I said earlier on, the adjusters will come off, and same for the bobbins for the paddock stand. They don't need to be on there at the moment. So I'll put this to one side, and then um, what we need to do is we need to move to the other end of the bike. Now this locking ring needs to come off. Um, as it goes, the uh, the tool the, the tool that you use to take the locking ring off from the swing arm would actually fit in there, um, but obviously it's not deep enough, which is a shame. Um, so what I'll do, I'll use a uh, I'll use a a drift or a punch, and I'll just tap it gently round uh, to get the locking ring undone, and then we'll be able to drop the whole this whole assembly out of the bike, um, and then that is the bare frame. So I'll go and get a hammer, I'll get a punch, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get that undone. Now looking at the keyways on the locker ring, someone's definitely been in here before. I guess someone at some point has done some head bearings or something like that, but that's been quite well marred. Um, I think what I'll do when I come to reassemble is perhaps replace this ring and get the correct tool in order to be able to torque it up correctly. Um, so first off, get this ring off. hand and as you can see now we can take the hole the front fork 
and out of the frame and drop the frame down to the floor so there we are now I'll put that down there like that for the moment and look at what we've got left here are the bearings they actually look in fact they feel very good and there's plenty of grease on them as well absolutely low so yeah I'm guessing they have been they have been replaced at some point um, in this bike's life because there's plenty of grease in there and um, knowing uh, knowing the uh, Japanese manufacturers they do tend to woefully under under grease bearings particularly in things like um, uh, shock absorber linkages and stuff like that so yeah this has definitely been done and as I said there was evidence that somebody had been in here before so that is the frame totally stripped now what it needs is an acid bath to get all the old paint and dirt off and then uh, a powder coat so I need to find somebody that can do that for me um, and obviously I need to uh, get it done in the correct colour I believe I believe this is a champagne silver now I'm sure somebody will know uh, colours and things like that better than I do I believe this is a champagne silver so I need to try and get it done in the same colour really just for authenticity um, all of the all of these uh, river nuts that hold various things on like the tank um, the rig wreck and all that sort of stuff I'm going to drill all of them out uh, and fit brand new ones um, so I'll get all of them out uh, prior to powder coat get it powder coated, fit new ones uh, and yeah, and then we'll be golden ok, next thing I need to do is get the forks out of the bottom yoke uh, along with the wheel obviously um, and then uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty much there so I'll get this to one side and then we'll get the, the, uh, the front forks and the wheel stripped apart Right, what I want to do is obviously I need to get the wheel out of these forks, but I'm going to take the mud guard off first. Probably should have done this before I took the forks out, really, but I just didn't. Uh, no real reason why. Um, there's one. Cut along the top. Screw for the side panels underneath, which I wasn't aware of. But we'll get that once it's out. Although this side it appears to be missing. There we go, as you can see. Yeah, there's supposed to be another one on the inside, but it was missing on this one. So, next, I uh, think we've got a couple of 10mm bolts. But looking at it, it looks like they'll come out easier without the wheel in. So, if I drop that down there, We'll look at getting the wheel out next. So, firstly, let's undo the pinch bolts for the axle. Wheel. 
And now we can see all the screws that we need to access on the inside. Right then, so you can hear all the uh, fork oil moving around. Next, we need to do next thing is to undo the screws on the sorry, the uh, the, the bolts on the bottom yoke. the entire bike stripped down to its components with the exception of the engine obviously um, the engine will be pulled apart later but now we've got plenty to be going on with absolutely loads of stuff which can be refurbished renewed repaired all of that good stuff so plenty of videos to come um, this is not going to be a short project and it's not going to be a quick project either um, I want to I want to do this properly so by the end of it the results speak for themselves you know i want it to uh, i want it to be an absolute thing of beauty so that is the intent anyway guys um obviously this video has dragged on for a fair bit um so i'm going to end it here hopefully you enjoyed it um and yeah if you uh, want to hit that subscribe stick along for the rest of the project then uh, please do and uh, i'll see you all again for the next one take care guys bye bye now